Immortal Aphrodite of the Shimmering Lone, daughter of Zeus, weaver of wiles, I pray thee crush not my spirit with anguish and distress, O Queen. But come hither if ever before thou didst hear my voice afar, and hearken, and leaving the golden house of thy father, camest with chariot yoked, and swift birds drew thee, their swift pinions fluttering over the dark earth, from heaven through mid-space. Quickly they arrived, and thou blessed one with immortal countenance smiling didst ask, what now is befallen me and why now I call and what I in my heart's madness, most desire. What fair one now wouldst thou draw to love thee? Who wrongs thee Sappho? For even if she flies she shall soon follow and if she rejects gifts, shall soon offer them and if she loves not shall soon love, however reluctant. Come I pray thee now and release me from cruel cares, and let my heart accomplish all that it desires, and be thou my ally. Shimmering throned immortal Aphrodite. Daughter of Zeus, enchantress, I implore thee. Spare me, O queen, this agony and anguish. Crush not my spirit. Whenever before thou hast hearkened to me. To my voice calling to thee in the distance. And heeding, thou hast come, leaving thy fathers. Golden dominions. With chariot yoked to thy fleet-winged courses. Fluttering swift pinions over earth's darkness. And bringing thee through the infinite, gliding. Downwards from heaven. Then, soon they arrived and thou, blessed goddess, with divine continence smiling, didst ask me, what new woe had befallen me now and why? Thus I had called the, what in my mad heart was my greatest desire? Who was it now that must feel my allurements? Who was the fair one that must be persuaded? Who wronged thee Sappho? For if now she flees, quickly she shall follow. And if she spurns gifts, soon shall she offer them. Yeah, if she knows not love, soon shall she feel it. Even reluctant. Come then, I pray, grant me surcease from sorrow. Drive away care, I beseech thee, O goddess. Fulfill for me what I yearn to accomplish. Be thou my ally. That one seems to me the equal of the gods, who sits in thy presence and hears near him thy sweet voice and lovely laughter, that indeed makes my heart beat fast in my bosom. For when I see thee even a little I am bereft of utterance, my tongue is useless and at once a subtle fire races under my skin, my eyes see nothing, my ears ring, sweat pours forth and all my body is seized with trembling. I am paler than, dried, grass and seem in my madness little better than dead, but I must dare all. Peer of the gods, the happiest man I seem. Sitting before thee, rapt at thy sight, hearing. Thy soft laughter and thy voice most gentle. Speaking so sweetly. Then in my bosom my heart wildly flutters. And, when on thee I gaze never so little. Bereft am I of all power of utterance. My tongue is useless. There rushes at once through my flesh tingling fire. My eyes are deprived of all power of vision. My ears hear nothing by sounds of winds roaring. And all is blackness. Down courses in streams the sweat of emotion. A dread trembling o'erhelms me, paler than I. Than dried grass in autumn, and in my madness. Dead I seem almost, 